Hey everybody, it's Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. How are you guys? Happy to be here today with you. We are going to make this really fun tag card. It has a little fun fold in it. So there is how it opens. Pretty cool, right? Um, I am using the Cheerful Daisies this week. I did use the Cheerful Daisies at the very beginning before the catalog was live to show off the in colors. And I really didn't get to explore them as much as I wanted to. So I'm doing a week of Cheerful Daisies. Um, I hope that you enjoy this revisit to this fantastic bundle. Today, the focus is this fantastic DSP that's six by six. It comes out every year. Every year there's different patterns. And this is the Subtles pack. So you have every two sheets of every print. And then the back has, <coughs> excuse me, different prints. You have the stripe and hearts. Pretty cool. So it comes in all the color families and both colors of in color. If you've never explored this pack, it's fantastic because whenever you want to have a pattern in a specific color, there it is. I wanted to use the new bubble bath and this is Lemon Lolly. These are two brand new colors. We've never had them before. And I've also used a little bit of ink blending to add some bubble bath to my die cuts. So the second star of the show is this fantastic die right here. It has three different daisies has this great leaf and as you can see these leaves have these kind of like pieces that come out and I use those as extra foliage so don't throw those away when they pop out let's go ahead and get started I'm going to move this out of the way bring in my blending brushes and my ink pads and of course, my favorite, you know what that is, right? The Simply Score tool, which is what we're going to start with first. It's always the beginning star, right? So here is the board. Let me make sure I get it in. There we go. So you need a piece of cardstock for your base. Mine is Lemon Lolly. And you need it to be eight and a half by four and a quarter. I know, unusual, right? Usually it's eight and a half by five and a half, but this card, because of the way it's folded, you only need eight and a half by four and a quarter. So we're gonna score it in two spots at three inches and at four and a half inches. So we're gonna come in at three and at four and a half. And there are our two score marks. I think you can see them pretty good on this color. So let's go ahead and burnish. So the way this card works, this piece is gonna come down like this. So that's how you have to burnish. And then when you fold it in that manner, it becomes your normal card size, which is five and a half by four and a quarter. Pretty cool, right? All right, <clears throat> let's get our corners done. So the way that the corners work is you take a piece of scrap paper. I'm trying to grab me one here so I can show you. And just make sure that your scrap paper has a straight edge on it and you're going to cut your straight edge on your scrap paper okay then you're going to lay that on your card here and we're just going to follow and now for the other side we're just going to flip it over you can see my all my writing here. <laughs> it was a quiz. 
we were taking on a catalog, on a new catalog quiz, but I always recycle all my paper. All right, so that's how you get your two corners like a tag, okay? So now the next step is our designer series paper and our bubble bath cardstock. So the two pieces of designer series paper, <coughs> excuse me, one of them is going to fit right up here. And the other one is going to fit at the bottom, but we're going to add this little strip of cardstock. So see how I did that on the inside? <coughs> so the best way to do that is to first attach your cardstock piece. So we're gonna add a little bit of adhesive. This one's almost out, so I keep thinking that it's gonna run out. And sometimes it seems like it is, but it hasn't yet, so it'll probably run out in this video because Murphy's Law and all that good stuff. So we're gonna add, this is a piece of 5 eighths of an inch by four. And what I want is for that piece to be centered on the three sides, have the same amount showing of around my border there. And that's why I like the wet adhesive because it gives me that wiggle room. So that is the same amount on each side and there, you know, just eyeballed. Then we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna attach it over the top like so. Okay, and then we're gonna line up the two bottom sections so that they fit. So let's go ahead and put our adhesive on our bubble bath in the polka dot. That's the, I'm kind of partial to polka dots. I like stripes, but I like polka dots way better. And so I usually, if I have a choice, I choose polka dots. I know they can be busy in some ways, but I still love them. Okay, so now I'm going to slide this up to make sure that my bottom is even and that my top is even. So there's our bottom section. And if you need to, you can pull out your handy dandy roller and make sure that you get it nice and attached. All right, so before we attach our top section here, we have to cut the ends. So we're going to use the same template and just make sure you have this the right direction. This piece is um, four by three and three quarters, so it's very similar in size. So make sure you have it laid the correct way before you place your um, template. So we're gonna go ahead and place that on there. Cut right along that line. Flip. And along that line right there. All right, so there's those. All right, so now this should fit perfect. Just like that. Not bad, not bad. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and attach that piece. And before we attach that piece we want to make sure that we have our flower set and all that good stuff so that one's going to go to the side the piece of bubble bath cardstock that we're not gluing yet is um one and a quarter inches by four we need this piece attached because we're going to put our flowers on there. So let's go ahead and make sure that this is adhered nicely. And we're gonna set this to the side for right now. I'm gonna put this over in it. That's gonna go right there, but we're not gonna glue it yet. All right, so let's work on our flowers. So the first thing is when you die cut that piece, 
let's see, you get this whole unit as one. So you need to trim it apart. That's the first step. So I'm gonna get the leaves, trim those off. I'm gonna separate the large flower from the smaller ones. Just snipping where they are attached. I want them separate because I want to be able to manipulate them separately. So there's that one. And then we're gonna trim off those little pieces that are left on the flowers. And then we're gonna separate these two flowers from each other as well. So we're going to go ahead and round that and trim off that last little piece right there. All right, so there are our flower pieces. And the centers of these already popped out. I have them, I have to find them. They're over here, here's one. Hopefully I didn't lose the other one. It's possible though, I'm good at losing things. And if I did, we'll make do with just one or it may show up when I least expect it. <laughs> Underneath something, you never know. But let me um, get rid of these little small pieces here. Shake those into my trash can. All right. I have also die cut each of the separate standalone um, floral pieces here. Let me see if I can find the match. I think it's this way. There we go. There's one. Two. And three. So those three were also die cut out. And those are going to be the base. I don't know what I could have done with that inner piece. Well, I mean, I do know. I could have just, you know, who knows? Who knows what it's stuck to? It's stuck to something, I'm 100% sure. But where it is stuck is, um, you know, your guess is as good as mine. So we're going to roll without it unless it decides to, oh, it showed up. There it is. Found it. <laughs> just had to move some papers that were off to the side. And then I have a little piece of ribbon. I just cut it, so I'm not sure. Five inches, five and a half inches. Right at about five and a half inches, let's see. Five and a quarter. Of um, This is from the Sheer Ribbon Combo Pack. So you get pink and blue and yellow, and I just think it's so gorgeous. It has Azure Afternoon, Lemon Lolly, and Bubble Bath. And I love that little silvery edge to the ribbon. It ties really pretty. That's that. I'm going to put that off to the side as well. All right. So let's grab a scrap. Let me use this one right here. And we are going to add a little bit of color to our um, greenery first. And this is soft sea foam. So I'm grabbing my soft sea foam and my small blending brush. And I'm just adding some color um, by holding it and moving my um, blending brush in a circular motion. I'm gonna add a little bit more right back here. And you just have to hold it gently, but you definitely need to hold it because you don't want to tear it. All right, so there's the leaves. Let's do these little leafy innards. <laughs> I don't really know the right word for them. And for these, I'm just gonna hold one end and Oh, I didn't have to hold that one. That one stayed in place really rather nicely for me. Let's move that one. And we'll try and put, do the same with this one. So there we go. Hey, not bad. So there are our greeneries. So we're done with um, this brush. And now we're going to work on our bubble bath. Once we're done with bubble bath, we can do a little assembly. So we'll replace that ink pad with bubble bath. 
and we are going to add a little bit right in the inner sec in the inner sections. So I'm gonna just work my blending brush right there in the center. When you get to the smaller flowers, you just want to use the tip. Gotta find it. Here we go. So just part of the brush. You don't want to use the whole brush, right? Because you don't want the whole flower to not be white, right? You just want a little touch of color in the middle. So there are our three flowers. And now we're done with bubble bath. It's fun to use ink blending for lots of things, not just for, um, you know, making backgrounds. So now we're going to attach these flowers onto their backings but I don't want them attached flat. I want there to be some dimension. So in order for that to happen, I need to put dimensionals on the back. So I've decided to use my edges for this purpose. And so I have a few of them already cut that I didn't use on another project. And so, yes, I'm gonna use a lot of them. Do you need to use as many? No, you can use as many as you are comfortable with, but I do like to have a decent amount of them on each flower. So you have to do whatever works for you. And I am going to do what works for me, which is always excessive amounts of adhesive. <laughs> I laugh, but I can't help it. <clears throat> it really is how I feel. I feel like I need to make sure that my hard work is going to survive touching and pointing and bending and moving. And so I like to um, put quite a bit of adhesive on my projects. Okay, so I pulled a bunch of those off here. And let's add some of these skinnier ones to this tiny Daisy. Now these are kind of close together, the petals, so if you want to skip and do every other, you can. It's your choice. Whatever works for you. I know that I like to make sure that my projects are well stuck down. Need a few more here. This big flower, I'm gonna cut this part off here because this is gonna be hard to do. Um, this big flower has, see, I knew that was gonna end up being a problem, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut them. And let them fall where they will. Well, those two stayed attached. Okay. Let's put this one here. All right, we gotta get the backs off of these guys. Just a few more. I know this is the longest part of this video, I think, is the adhesive part because I have so much adhesive that 
I put on my projects. I apologize. You can always fast forward <laughs> if it's too much for you. I do need to put some though on that these side this side of the petals. I've missed those. So I'm gonna grab a a piece like so and then I'm gonna trim it. I want them to be shorter. So I'm going to cut in this direction. And if the backs come off, that's okay. As long as I have coverage on my flower petals. And it really does make a difference when you go through this kind of effort. In my opinion, it does because um, it just, if you're going to take the time to make a really beautiful project, you definitely want to make sure that it's going to hold up. You don't want it to go to the recipient and then um, not hold um, or one of the flowers fall off or it to sink down or whatever. So, all right. I'm going to put a tiny little piece on this top section of the sideways daisy because I feel like there's no support up here, whereas the other ones are in the middle, and so they should be fine. All right, so I'm going to pull the backs off of these, and they're kind of small, so it's harder to use the take your pick tool, which is what I normally use because I made them pretty skinny so that they would fit, especially on this particular flower that has um, pretty thin petals. So I'm going through here and it'll take a second, but it will be worth it to pull the backs off of these. And then I'm gonna go ahead right away one at a time as I pull the backs off. I'm going to go ahead and attach onto, oh, this piece fell off of this petal, I think, yeah. All right. Oh my goodness. These pieces are coming everywhere. All right. So let's go ahead and attach it right onto our flower. It's gonna be so pretty. It'll be well worth the effort that we took and you'll see how pretty it is when it's lifted like that. Isn't that nice? So even though it takes a little time to do this and you end up with a lot of dimensional backings on your desk, <laughs> it's worth it, it's worth it. Okay, there's that one. Let's see how pretty. And let's do the last one. And then our card is almost finished, really. This was the hardest part of the card. This one I could probably use my Take Your Pick tool on, but I have already begun using my fingers. I think I fumble more when I use my fingers. The Take Your Pick tool works really well for me. I'm not sure. You'll have to leave me comments and let me know if you use your take your pick tool to peel the backs off your dimensionals or not. Um, for me, I love it because then I know that the backings are going in the trash can. Like right now, this is kind of scary to me because they may end up stuck to something and not in the trash can. Very possible. Okay. Well... I guess I'm gonna go ahead and push those two out since the rest of them are out. Okay, so let's find our match. Here we go. I think this looks so beautiful when it's lifted up like that off of your piece. All right, so our three flowers are done. We have our words. Let's try and put this craziness away. I'm moving the mat just temporarily so that I can gather all of this mess up. If there was a quick way to throw it away, 
Okay, that wasn't, that didn't take that long actually. I thought it was gonna be a lot worse. Okay, so we just have a small little piece left. So I'm gonna separate that from the back. Okay, so let's get our card back in place here. This, remember, is gonna go here, but we don't need it yet. We're gonna figure out how we wanna place our flowers and how we want them to overhang on our tag. So I think I'm gonna do that one that way, this one down a little bit, just like that. So we're gonna start with this one. Let's bring my mat in. And we're gonna put some wet adhesive on the back. And I'm holding this because the card is gonna spring up and open. So we're gonna place this flower down like that, pretty. All right, this one here, half of it is covered and the other isn't. So instead of trying to guess, I'm just gonna put adhesive in a circular spot because I know that that will be covered by petals. So we'll put that in place. And then for this one, barely any of this, so the rest can be glued down. All right, and we're gonna put this in place. Okay, so now comes the leaves. And since I only put a little bit of adhesive underneath that flower, it helps us as we put adhesive on the stem and slide it underneath there. I want that one leaf to pop up and the rest can be like that. Isn't that beautiful? And then we're gonna tuck these, but I am gonna put full adhesive, if I can, on the back, because these are gonna be flat. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna get it started and at least go down that middle veining section. And you can see it's stuck to my finger, so I'm gonna have to clean my fingers in a minute, but this one we're gonna tuck right here. And I think that that looks really pretty. And then the other one we're gonna try and tuck in this corner. Let's see if it will work. Right underneath that piece. I love that. What do you guys think? Not bad. Not bad at all. All right. Now, let's go ahead and attach our You Made My Day. I already stamped that and cut it because I had to use my guillotine cutter and I had to get really close. And I just figured I already did one, I'll do the other one at the same time when I did my first card. So let me grab my... And then this piece is gonna lay right along this edge here, right above that flower and right bordered along that designer series paper. So make sure that it is there and I have to look at it to make sure that I'm straight and it is. Now comes this piece. So now that we know how much room we have, we know where we can stamp our Your Friendship Means Everything. We're gonna use basic gray. Okay, and I'm just gonna hold this, but first I have to make sure it's straight in place. And I'm not gluing it in case I make a mistake. And then we're gonna stamp that off here like this. Turned out great, but if I had made a mistake, if it wasn't glued, I could just flip it over and try again. So let's go ahead, now that we know that we did a good job, add our adhesive. And then the final step, we're going to do our ribbon at the top and our embellishments. So we'll tuck that in there. 
make sure that I went a little crazy on the glue on that side. Look, it's on my nail and everything. Thank God for my glue, uh, my adhesive remover. And baby wipes in my drawer right here next to me. <laughs> Cause I have to use them often cause I'm messy. All right, so there's that. I definitely want to make sure that I cap my glue. I don't want a mass of glue. And then I want to make sure that I have my adhesive remover out so I can get that extra off of there. And I think I actually touched this flower petal like a little bit. All right. Let that sit like that for right now. Let's get our stamp cleaned here. All right, now to do the um, top of your tag, I used the regular old hold punch, just an office supply hole punch. It's a quarter inch circle. I can link it in the description below if you wish. So we are gonna go from the front to the back. And then we're gonna use our fingers here to open and we're gonna stick, well, we're gonna try and make these even first, well, as best we can. And then we're gonna put them through that hole. Well, there's one, but the other one got away from me. There we go. And then you wanna pull like that. And then I'm going to use my ribbon scissors and I'm going to trim gonna trim these this direction so we'll go for that one and there's that one very pretty the ribbon turned out nice and then let's grab our embellishments I decided to use the iridescent um, rhinestones. I absolutely love these iridescent rhinestone basic jewels. I think they're fantastic. Put my little baby wipes away. All right. So let me grab my iridescent rhinestones. And they come in three sizes. So I'm going to use um, the three different sizes, one large, one medium, and one small. I love them because no matter what color they're on, they take on that color. So out comes the take your pick tool finally. I didn't think I was gonna end up using it today, but I'm gonna go start with the large one. I'm gonna put one over here and then I'm gonna take a little one. We'll put that up here somewhere, maybe there. And then the medium one we'll put down here. But first I wanna close my card so that I can see where it lies best around, you know, my flower section, maybe right there. No, I'm gonna do it here. That way, when your card is closed, you have your three rhinestones in a triangular pattern. And then when you open, you have one down here. I love this card. I just think it's such a unique fold and a fun way to start the week with the da Cheerful Daisies bundle. If you guys have not purchased this bundle, I challenge you to grab it. And if you have never tried our designer series paper in the actual patterned in all of the um, color families, pick your favorite color family and try it. You will not regret it. All right, guys, this is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Thanks for being here, and I will see you here next time. 
I appreciate you being with me. If you have never subscribed, please do so. Share my video with your friends. And thanks for being here. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Happy stamping.